Thank you, thank you, Amber Landers. Thanks for for coming on live with me. Uh, my fellow soldiers of the Amazonian Revolution, dear citizens of the Amazonian nation, I want to salute you all tonight, wherever you may be. As usual, I would invite all of us to observe a minute of silence in honor of all those who've laid their lives, in honor of all those who've sacrificed their liberty so Ambazonia might yet be free. My fellow Ambazonians, just about a year ago, Mr. Bia declared war from the tarmac of the Nsimalen airport on Ambazonia. This declaration made official the subterranean war they have waged against our people for 56 years. In declaring war, Mr. Beer taught as he has done in the past 56 years that Ambazonia will be crushed. That once and for all, Cameroon will be allowed to write the history of our own country. Mr. Beer was convinced that his military was invincible that they were going to defeat us in the battlefield, officially make Ambazonia a conquered land, impose their domestic laws on our country, and continue to treat our people like slaves. Mr. Beer never knew that the never again generation will rise up from every block in Ambazonia, that the pent up anger that has been building in us for 56 years of curtailment, impunity, deprivation, systematic torture, 
political exclusion would translate into a determination that will end the history of Cameroon and that would forever rewrite the history of Ambazonia as our forebears had thought of, as those who had sacrificed to make it happen had thought of. My fellow countrymen and women, this is an unprecedented moment in our history, a moment we should never forget, a moment that will change the landscape of Africa, rewrite the theory of revolutions, rewrite the determination of a people hemmed in by two countries that none of which support us, but that our shared determination, our shared will to survive on the same spot on which our forebears were murdered will make us a triumphant people. When Mr. Bia declared war, he believed as his predecessor, Mr. Aijo, that like the Bamelikis, they were going to crush us. They were going to use their genocidal machinery to finally terminate Ambazonia. Mr. Bia believed that like he did with John Frunde before, they were going to hem us in. They were going to bleed us until we surrender. Mr. Bia got it wrong. He thought he was going to mobilize the international community against us. That he was going to build on the 1961 conspiracy that saw the United Nations, saw the United Kingdom and France bonded together against the vote for Amazonian independence. Mr. Bia thought he was going to invite France to reshape its geopolitical reality in the Central African sub-region, give him the support he needed not only to survive as a, an 86-year-old dictator, but to make his country prevail over our own country. The shared determination of our people, a strategic mindset, a mindset that defined this revolution as a collective survival of the Ambazonian people. This mindset defined a strategy that responded to domestic realities, that responded to the international realities on how struggles like these are conducted. My fellow citizens, your determination has worked in favor of Ambazonia. The strategies that we put in place, that you will fight block by block, that the collective aspiration of the Ambazonian people will be expressed in the method in which they defend their homeland, that there will be universal participation in the effort to decolonize Ambazonia, that you will become the primary investors in your own liberation so you can own the outcome. That determination has translated into an international recognition in our effort to be free. I want to tell all the soldiers of the revolution, all those who continue to bleed for Ambazonia, that your sacrifices will not be in vain. That Ambazonia will forever recognize the efforts you've put. That for all those who are fighting, all those who are wounded, the state of Ambazonia will be responsible to make sure you are treated now or after independence. For all those who lose their limbs, the national treasury will take responsibility for your health, that you are going to be provided with a life health insurance for the sacrifices you have made. For all the soldiers who die in this revolution, the state of Ambazonia will compensate your family and make sure we look after your children until they are 18 years of age and will provide them with the opportunity to sustain their own lives. For all those who are buried today on, in unmarked graves, the National Cemetery of Ambazonia will hold your body in honor of the sacrifices that you are making today. 
for all the students who are fighting. The Ambazonian state will provide you with free education after independence. If you want to continue as a military, you will be provided with the opportunity to specialize within the military in any discipline, in any field. And the Ambazonian state will take full responsibility for the cost of that specialty. If you want to move from the military into a different field, you want to become a scientist, you want to become an engineer, a carpenter. If you are fighting today, the state of Ambazonia will take full responsibility for you to make sure that you can enter into that discipline. We will not forget. We will not forget those who bleed for us today. The state of Ambazonia will be totally responsible for your future. If you lose your life, we will take care of your kids. We will provide a thank you for your family. We will emblematize your name in the annals of the history of Ambazonia. So that the next generation will rise up and never forget all those who bled, who sacrificed, who went to jail. So that they should be free. And they will make sure they never allow our country again to be messed up with. By another country. Fellow citizens, the sacrifices are enormous. The determination to be free is written on every street in Ambazonia. The sheer capacity of our collective effort has manifested itself in the block-by-block -block campaign within the 13 counties. Internationalization of our effort, getting parliaments across the globe to talk about our case. The targeted diplomacy efforts that we have made has made Ambazonia a household name. We thought we wanted to free ourselves. We made ourselves known. We plastered ourselves on the international map. We made sure every news item, every press organ has the appetite to cover Ambazonia. Let Mr. Bia know that the war he declared on us will end the history of Cameroon once and for all. And I call on every soldier of the revolution to remember the 30th of November as the day Mr. Bia declared war on Ambazonia. Make this day a day of rage. Make this day a day of rage against Cameroon. I have heard Mr. Bia said, that the Ambazonian forces should lay down their arms. I want to remind him that we are fighting in the land of our birth. We are defending the land of the Kuba Likenyes, the Abumbis. We are defending the land of all the brave warriors who have laid their lives down for Ambazonia. And I call on all Cameroon soldiers to lay down their arms within Ambazonia and to turn their arms against the very system that has made them slaves in the land of their birth. I want to remind the soldiers of Cameroon that they are fighting a loose battle, a battle they cannot win. They are bleeding in vain. They are dying in vain. They will be buried in unmarked graves in Ambazonia. And for all those who will survive, who will find your graves wherever you are buried, exhume your body and charge you for crimes against humanity for crimes against the people of Ambazonia. Let the soldiers who carry guns against our people know you cannot defeat Ambazonia. You cannot defeat our brave soldiers because they are warriors in the land of their birth. They have courage. They have determination. They've got nothing more to lose. They've been denied the right to education, denied the right to life, denied the right to live a self-fulfilling life in the land of their birth. They've raised our flag, sang our anthem, and proclaimed the independence of our homeland. And their blood, their life, will be laid down to make sure we defend the 43,000 square miles of the contours of our homeland. That is the honor for which they fight, in honor for all those who have died, those who are in jail. We remember and honor them. Their sacrifices will never be in vain. My fellow soldiers of the revolution, dear citizens, you must understand 
that what we seek is freedom. What we seek is freedom. And we must conduct ourselves with the highest degree of integrity towards our friends and towards our foes. We cannot use the same methods that the occupier has used against us. When we define the strategies of this revolution, we were aware of the way the international system works. We are conscious that we might win this war in two years or we might spend the next 30 years fighting. The choice is ours. And it's going to be determined by the way we conduct ourselves. By the words that comes out from the mouth of leaders. From the character of the actors of this revolution. That if you are not conscious of the nature of the international system. That if you are not conscious of the nature of the beast which we seek to eliminate from our homeland. We are going to win Ambazonia but we are going to lose our freedom. That is why we said from the beginning, we will arrest every collaborator. We will make sure all those who by their action or by their omission contribute in the denigration of the Ambazonian people, all those who participate in one way or the other, to subjugate us, to murder us, we are going to hold them now or in the future responsible. But we cannot act with the same intensity and ferocity towards our own civilians. Not even towards the civilians of Cameroon or other countries that have found Ambazonia to be their homes. That is why when the children were kidnapped, I condemned it in the strongest terms. We want Ambazonia to be in the headlines for all the good reasons. For the sacrifices we are making. For the beauty of our shores, the contours of our country. The brilliance of our people. The grace of our people. For the ability of the Ambazonian people to have survived 57 years of carnage. For our empathy. For our wit that we should be in the international headlines for the sacrifices of the Sesekus, the Tassans, the Numvi Walters, the Ndangos, for the bravery of the Amazonian women, for the sacrifices of our boys living in the bushes, our refugees in Nigeria, the pain of the mothers, the anguish of our parents. We should not be on the headlines because of any other wrong reason. We understand there are Tanganjis and their collaborators are plotting and scheming within Ambazonia to give us a bad name. And we have made it clear they can kidnap, they can abduct. Ambazonians will never be tapped as terrorists because we conduct ourselves in the highest sense of the discipline following the code of conduct laid down by our defense forces understanding the spirit of the four Geneva Conventions on the laws of war, the necessity to protect the rights of our people and to protect the rights of those we capture and to protect the rights of all those who live within our shores and within our bounty. We know what we are doing and we will continue as a people to sacrifice and conduct ourselves in a way that will protect the integrity of our revolution now and in the future. It is not about us. It is not even about this generation. I want you to think seriously about the kind of Ambazonia you want to be. It should shape the way you talk. It shapes the way you conduct yourselves. And it shapes the way you act. It is only how you act today that will reflect the kind of society you want to be. Your intolerance today will define Ambazonia as an intolerant nation. The hate you give will define Ambazonia as a country of animosity, hate, and anger. I want you to know we have sacrificed a lot to make the excitement of the moment, the stupidity of our excitement, reshape our revolution in a way that will haunt the next generation. 
We are the block by block generation, brave warriors of Amazonia. We fight to be free. We fight to make sure the land we bequeath to the next generation is not deprived of economic opportunities. It's not harmed by the anger of the international system in terms of the sanctions they place on us. We want to make sure we do not impoverish our system in such a way the next generation lives in debt, lives in agony. Then all the sacrifices we make today would have been in vain. I know you are wiser. I know you are thoughtful. I know we make mistakes, but I know the corrective nature of the Ambazonian psyche is automated in nature to make us better people going forward. The reason why we call for school boycott, fellow Ambazonians, we explain to ourselves and to the world that the security situation in our homeland is dire. That our children cannot go to school under a system of brutality. That we cannot allow our children, vulnerable as they are, to move on the streets occupied by soldiers of Cameroon shooting indiscriminately with the power and right to shoot to kill without any distinction between combatants and civilians. That is too difficult, too risky to risk your life for an education that will make you a liability to yourself, to your family and to the next generation. We explain to the world that we cannot go to school under the same curriculum of education that has made us a liability in the land of our birth. That has not given us any opportunity. That has stupefied us. That has moved us from the street to stop us fighting against the oppression and put us within four walls to learn the history of the oppressor, to study how they have oppressed us. That we will build a better system, a curriculum of education that responds to our economic realities that turn the ordinary Ambazonian into an asset, even churning cassava into gari, selling okra into markets, making money to be able to take care of their families, build an educational system that is going to understand the local realities of our economy, marry it with the global realities to make Ambazonia a place of investors, where we can educate our children to become assets to our economy that will be the pride of investors when they come to invest in our country that we cannot contemplate to go into classrooms that are just four walls to turn the next generation of corrupt Cameroonians with Ambazonian mentality. I understand the international system was more concerned with the right of our people to education. I understand that. That every child has a right to education. Every human being has the right to education. But you must marry this right to education with the right to life. The right to life, the right to the protection of personal integrity, supersedes those are primary fundamental rights. That if you lose your life, education is meaningless. I know they are going to argue that human rights are interdependent, they are not divisible, that you cannot divide human rights. I understand that, but the right to life is sacrosanct. And a dead child, an abducted child, a kidnapped child cannot sit in a classroom. And that we must understand that Ambazonia has been at war for more than 57 years. We must understand the nature of the beer regime, the way they conduct themselves. I understand the whole world was moved when these kids were taken away from their schools. I want to remind them that there are more than 1,000 Ambazonians who have been abducted from our homeland. They've been scattered in the jails of La Republic to Cameroon. Yes, we reject their abduction, but we will remind the international community that they must stand to reject the kidnapping of our people from our streets, the abduction of our leaders from Nigeria and deported to Cameroon. That the same anger, the same frustration that they showed against the kidnapping of these students. We want to seal that palpitation in them against Tassang. We want to see the same palpitation against the kidnapping of Dr. Four. If human rights is indivisible, 
It is indivisible for those languishing in Kondengi. It is indivisible for all those locked up in Boya. For all those kidnapped and detained in detention centers which we don't know. The international system must be reminded that the attempt by the international community to allow Mr. Bia to define the narrative of this revolution, to try to tag Ambazonians as terrorists, has consequences. We are still in charge today. If they make the mistake of demonizing our revolution, this revolution will move from the hands of political leaders into the hands of the soldiers where no rules will be respected. We have defined the rules of this revolution. Rules that are marked within the contours of international norms. If they demonize our revolution, Ambazonia will become a free-for-all fight in which there will be lawlessness. It will breed international terrorism. Protecting Mr. Bia against the interests of 8 million Ambazonians is a huge mistake. Ambazonia will become the harbinger for peace and security in the West African region. Cameroon is not. Ambazonia will be the pride and the beacon of democratic tolerance, the respect of human rights, the protection of personal security. Cameroon is not. Ambazonia will trade with partners, free and fair trade that protects our own interests and provide a taxation policy that welcomes international investors. Cameroon is not. Ambazonia will be a democratic system where there will be transparent and free elections where losers will congratulate the victors. Cameroon is not. Ambazonia will be a place of creative talents that will build an economy that will be the pride of the region. Cameroon is not. And so to protect the interest of Cameroon against the yearning, the suffering, the pain of 8 million Ambazonians and the pain of 15 million Cameroonians, it's a hypocrisy which the world must change. Ambazonia must be recognized as a state. That is the only way we can protect the people of Ambazonia, the people of Cameroon within our countries. Ambazonia must be respected. Ambazonia must be recognized to make sure we have the opportunity to start building an educational system that protects our people, to make sure there is peace and security, to make children to go to school without fear. That is the only way we can open our classrooms. We cannot send, take the risk of sending our children to school to lose their lives or to be abducted by a renegade regime that has terrorized and murdered our people. My fellow citizens, I want you to know the future of our country is in our hands. The future of Ambazonia is in the hands of our soldiers of the revolution. Each time we have taken our revolution close to victory, Cameroon has selected collaborators that it has sponsored to domesticate the resistance, to make our pain the, the owners of Cameroon. The tragedy in Ambazonia is an international affair. It's an affair that would be adjudicated at the level of the international system. And so any attempt by Cameroon to recruit Mr. Munzo and the other collaborator of uh, Mr. Cardinal Tumi to adjudicate for them will not work. It didn't work with all the political parties that it sponsored within Ambazonia to thwart the interests of our country. We showed them on the 7th of October that we are not part of Cameroon, that even those political parties that purported to speak for Ambazonia could not muster the courage to mobilize our people. We are the sole owners of our destiny. And I call upon all of you to make sure no collaborator is going to hold any conference within the territorial space of Ambazonia. No collaborator will talk for us but for us and represent our interests. There will be no negotiation with the BR regime. We will batter them block by block until we bleed them out of our homeland. 
define the nature of the termination of the occupation of our homeland. We are winning. Soldiers of the revolution, keep the fight on. Put the pressure on every inch of our land. This is the fight of our lifetime. The fight for our own survival. The fight for the emancipation of generations yet unborn. It's a reflection of the kind of society that we want to build. It is going to be a fight that will go beyond the shores of Ambazonia and give pride to other African people suffering from oppression. No one again will ever speak for Ambazonia. We are the generation that will bat for ourselves, define the way that we want to live our lives, the kind of laws that we want to live under. You are for the good fight. And I would like you to still conduct yourselves, knowing that the way you act today will define the way our country will be tomorrow. You have fought a good fight at the level of the international community. You have taken back your pride. You have reclaimed your identity. You now worship your flag. You now sing your anthem. In the next few weeks, we will give you something new to be proud of. Some new identity to be proud of. And Bazonians, you should know our fight for liberation begins with mental freedom, reclaiming our identity through our flag, our iron terms, our own paraphernalia, being able to be proud as Ambazonians, being able to conduct trade, to conduct You have fought like valiant soldiers. Ambazonia is free. We have got one task left. To remove every last Cameroonian soldier in Ambazonia. To remove the collaborators who make our independence drive difficult. To make sure that we conduct ourselves at the level of the international system. Like a people who can take over a country from day one and begin to implement policies that will change the lives of our people, redefine our economic system, our political policies. You've got the leaders to do that. You've got the brave patriot volunteers battling on, in Ambalan to do that. I want to thank you all for your sacrifices. I want to make a solemn promise to all those who've giving up their time, their liberty, their security, that your sacrifices will never be in vain. God bless you all. God protect our soldiers on the ground. God bless Ambazonia. Good night.